And hey, welcome back to Urban Fox Music, the big cousin of World Clique TV. And today we are fortunate to speak to Omar, who's just literally driven up from um, London. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> the traffic was bonkers, so he's a little bit late. So we're going to try and get through this um, interview before he does his performance. So how are you? Yeah, good. Not too bad, considering. Good. I've been on the road since half past ten. It's now five past seven. Um, <laughs> but that, that's, you know, that's all part of the, part of the journey, you know? Cool. This is not your first time to Leeds, right? No, I was actually here not that long ago, a couple of months ago. But yeah, I've, I've done several shows all, all around the sea. Cool. Well, it's nice to have you back. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, then we'll get a little bit of background about you so people know a little bit about you. But we'll concentrate on your new album that we talk, what you good, you're here to promote. Mm -hmm. So, your background, where were you born? Where do you live? Where do you come from? <laughs> <laughs> all three of them. I was born in South London, uh, but I grew up in a place called Canterbury mm -hmm. uh, from 6 to 16. Then I uh, studied... Uh, in Manchester for a couple of years at the Cheatham School of Music and came back to London when I was 18. Oh, cool. So you've, um, your background is um, you're a singer, songwriter and musician. You play the trumpet, the piano and percussion. And I think it's worth mentioning to people that you are actually classically trained, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I, I used to be classically trained in the cornet and the baritone and the tube. I don't play those anymore. Um, I also play the bass, the drums and the keys. That's what I, I play now. Um, and yes, I was the principal percussionist of the Kent Youth Orchestra for, for a time, played in the uh, Kent Percussion Ensemble, um, played in various brass bands at school as well. So uh, yeah, I've done quite a varying, you know, very different degree of jobs musically. It's good because um, I think people who are naturally talented in music, like you seem to be, are still classically trained as well. And I think that adds to your natural talent. How has it helped through your career being classically trained? Well, I think it helps in terms of my production, you know, because I've always played in, in, in live groups. So, like I said, in orchestras, choirs, brass bands, it's always been a, a group of people uh, around me. And that's affected my production because I like to have those kind of sounds. You know, the stuff from the 60s and 70s was a group of people in one room making that music. They weren't, you know, layering tracks over tracks over tracks. It was like one, one take and you had to, had to get it. And it had, there's this vibe that, that is created when you're playing with a bunch of other musicians, which is uh, unlike no other, you know. So I always try and put that in my music. Yeah. So it's worth definitely being classically changed at least. Well, it, you know, it doesn't hurt, you know, in terms of um, like my string arrangements um, and like I said, the production that I use as well. I'm very organic, you know, uh, my latest album, The Man, is, uh, is very indicative of, of, of my production yeah. as a whole because it's, it's, everything is quite live. You just plug in and go. It's not all about sequences and, and samples and, 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 and uh, you know, synthetic sounds. It's very much a thing where it's like roads, it's percussion, it's drums, it's bass. Um, it's brass, you know, strings, all these things are like, you know, the original instruments. And people have been using them for thousands of years, you know, why not keep using them for, for thousands more? That's what I like about your music, because you can hear all of that in the music. It's very, like, expansive and varied. And also you've got, um, is it two brothers and one sister who are musically inclined as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, my younger, well, they're all younger. Uh, my younger sister, Sami, she's a singer, you know, I'm right, Sam's Life Hook. It's got a latest album out at the moment. Also, um, my little brother, Scratch Professor, he also comes in and writes and does production with me as well. Uh, my middle brother, Kimon, is an MC and drummer too. So the whole family sings and does music and your dad had a record label. That's pretty cool, isn't it? My dad's got a record label. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of, yeah, it was a nice little uh, a way to get started in the music business. Is, um, when I was 16, um, he was looking for like a soul artist because his, his label, his, his thing is about reggae. He had a reggae yeah. band called yeah. Ja Lion and um, he was looking for something new to, to put out there. And, um, you know, I started writing my music and so he decided to... Now get behind me, and that's when I released, released my first single when I was 16, called Mr. Postman. I'm glad you mentioned that, because I was actually thinking, what's Omar's first song? <laughs> and I went online, and saw it there online, and then afterwards, when I was listening to the song, I love it, and um, I saw you in an interview. I hate it. I know, that's what I'm saying. I saw you in an interview saying that you didn't like it. I'm like, dude, why? I love it. It was uh, one of those things, it was just sort of like an experiment for me, you know, like my first go at recording and, and, and making music in that, in that way, because I've been classically and jazz trained up until that point. Right. Um, but listening back to it, it really didn't show off my talents to, to their best light, as I, as I think. But I think, it, you know, it, it was somewhere to start. And also, 
it gave me a sort of a marker as, as to where not to go again after that. You know what I mean? Because then I decided that whatever music I was going to make, yeah. you have to like it. You know what I mean? You have to be behind it because imagine if I didn't like there's nothing like this. Yeah. Uh, you know, 23 years, 24 years later on, I'm still singing this song. Imagine if I hated it. It'd be like a, a noose around my neck. You know what I mean? So I always had to make music that I wanted to, yeah. to listen to after that. Well, I've actually favoured that song in my uh, channel, so if you want to check it out, because I love it. It sounds like a mixture of New Edition and Level 42, and I love the 80s, so check okay. it out. <laughs> <laughs> so your next song was um, You and Me with uh, the, Karen, no, the great Karen Wheeler. Uh, yeah, it was actually Vanessa, uh, Vanessa Simon is the, the, the lady that I'm duetting with. Um, Karen Wheeler did backing back vocals. Back. Um, yeah, and it was just like, I was basically releasing a song a year because I was still at school. Um, so I, you know, I had my studies to, to contend with as well. But I always, I always kept, you know, trying to plug away at um, making the music. But that song now, I was quite happy with that one. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was quite pleased with the, the, the production on that one. But I couldn't find that on YouTube. Sorry, folks. It's there somewhere. <laughs> so I just yeah. look at the postman. <laughs> <laughs> so then your first album was um, There's Nothing Like This um, um, on your dad's label, Congo Records. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then your first major release sign up, I should say, was with Talking Loud in 1991. Mm. Yeah, that was off the back of um, hearing There's Nothing Like This. And, and Nothing Like This on my dad's label um, went to number 54. We didn't have any video or any kind of like major help behind it. But um, people were playing in the clubs and, and on the uh, pirate stations as well. Um, so there was a bit of a buzz going on at the time. And uh, we got approached by Giles Peterson, Norman Jay, yeah. who were running uh, Talking Loud at the time, and said, yeah, you want to come on the label? And I'm like, well, it was a perfect opportunity because my dad's label was great to get started, but in terms of a worldwide network, you know, we, we needed help. And, um, yeah, they came up at the right time, and that's when we kind of remixed the album, rejigged it um, to have the re-release in 91. Well, in my opinion, and many other people's opinion, there's nothing like this is like the best urban classic ever. And there's, there's no way that song is ever going to sound dry. Every time I hear it, I'm just like groove into it. Okay. There's a lot of like artists who, well, more like actors who, you know, are kind of known for, like William Shackner, for example, is kind of well known for being Captain James T. Kirk and hates the fact that everybody loves him for that. Right. But everybody loves you for that song. How do you feel about having that song to your name forever? I mean, that's fine. You know, like I said, after the, the, the Mr. Postman fiasco, that I decided <laughs> to make the music that I'm going to be happy with. And if people are going to start with that one, if people don't even know my music, if they know that one at least, then, you know what I mean, I've, I've, I've done my job there. You know what I mean? So um, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of that song. But you've made loads of other types of different songs as well because your, your taste is very eclectic, which I really love because I can hear so many different influences in your music, African, jazz, hip-hop, soul, all kinds of stuff. How did you sort of pick up that type of vibe of making your music in that way? Um, it's just the music that speaks to you, you know. Um, music is uh, so varied in uh, so many different shades and colours. I, I don't really say no to any kind of style, basically. Um, which is kind of what people know me for, you know, because every time I come up with something, it's always slightly different to the what I did before um, and you know there's always something connecting those styles as well I think it's mainly Africa in terms of the hip-hop the jazz the soul the reggae the Latin the funk even classical is is um, linked in, in there as well and there's just so many ways of combining all those different textures um, you know I'm still not done yet mixing them all up and making something new you know yeah. Well, you've worked with many great people as well, and everybody likes to mention the Stevie Wonder connection. So, it, um, you, when did you first come across Stevie Wonder? Um, years ago. I, I actually came across him in 1984 when he came. He was around the back of one of the estates in, in London. And I didn't actually meet him then, but then I actually got to meet him three years later, 87. Um, and then in 1990 as well. And then I kind of got a bit closer and closer each time because... Um, the guy who ended up being my manager, Keith Harris, was actually his representative in, in the UK. And he made a formal introduction and gave him one of my albums. And he said he loved my music, he wanted to work with me from, from then, uh, you know, which blew me away. Because this is the man I was listening to from I was yay high. And, you know, I'd be singing in the bedroom and trying to harmonise with all this stuff. He taught me a lot of what I did without me even meeting him. So to actually, for him to say that to me was just uh, fantastic. Was it 14 years that he came true um, afterwards? No, it was, well, it, was, it was actually 92 when he heard my album Music. And then he said from then he was going to write me a number one single, which uh, uh, he, he didn't actually get back to me till 2000. 
So, I mean, well, no, we tried to do something in 93, but uh, this is one of the times when I was in LA. I had to wait until it was half past two in the morning to get that call, come to the studio. Like, yeah, let's go to the studio. <laughs> went, went there and then uh, um, he's fallen asleep, so we didn't actually finish the session <laughs> then. Um, so with Steve, you just got to be patient because yeah. when he says he'll do a thing, then he'll come too. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I got the phone call in 2000 and said, yo, man, it's your boy. I'm like, who's that? He goes, Stevie. I'm going, Steve, you. <laughs> Stevie Wonder, I got Stevie Stop. Wonder, sing for me. And he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Went, this is the real yeah. thing. And for like two weeks, um, he, was in, he was in London and uh, I hung out at the hotel, the restaurants, clubs and all that. And finally we got to the studio yeah. and went and put down one tune. And then next day he calls me, oh, we've got another tune, let's go. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? I, I really um, utilised the, the time that I had. You're not like an egocentric type of artist who's like, you know, bigging yourself up all the time it's all about the money and fame so I think your um, fans appreciate that and people are listening to the music and that's why you've lasted so long well I'm simple man you know simple things you know what I'm saying like I said just got to pay my bills be able to eat my food buy the buy the kids some clothes and, and games or whatever they need to to have and you know um, it's, it's fun you know this is a blessing that I uh, that I've been been given living living the life that I live lead and been able to play my music, write my music and go out there and perform worldwide with everybody. It's just, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a blessing, you know, and it's a gift as well. Every morning I wake up, I say, give thanks for this because it's not like I'm slogging hard. You know, there's people out there just fighting to survive out there, you know what I mean? And um, my life isn't like that at all. So yeah, I just give thanks to whoever's doing this thank you very much <laughs> wherever you are you know universe, keep it going yeah. yeah and i can feel that when you're singing your music so when i was checking out your new album i saw a live performance of the uh, debut single from the album the man mm. and you were just on stage like so relaxed and so comfortable just singing the song and you still have that sort of energy where i feel like if i want to listen to you like i feel like i'm just in your living room and you're just like yeah i'm gonna sing you a song and that's how it sort of comes off across on stage well yeah i mean that's the vibe i i, I like you, everybody to come to the show with you know what i mean it's just like we're all mates together i'm gonna sing a couple of tunes and just relax man smoke smoke where you gotta smoke drink where you gotta drink you know what i mean we're all gonna have a good time yeah but your new album the man it's um when i listened to it it just sounded like it's sort of like a point where you've all the music that you've done before and all the experience that you've done before has come to this point on this album the man which is amazing by the way and the tracks on it just sounded so i don't know wisely energetic like you've just come to this point now where you've just you've learned so much you've done so much and here's this new album you can just hear it all all the stuff that you've done over you know in the past and stuff like that how how did you come about writing this album well it's seven years between this album and the one before right. and you know the process is always the same you just get a vibe excuse me and 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 you you roll with it but in terms of the the lyrical content i mean i'm calling it the, the man i just picked the the title simply because it seemed to be the best one for me for this album uh, that's how i that's how i pick all my titles for the album you know um it's not until late on down the line that i'm beginning to re realize it's like a coming of age album you know, um, I've got twin girls now, I'm a family man, do you know what I mean? So I'm in a much different place than I was, you know, this, uh, seven years, eight years previous um, to this. Um, like even when I was writing The Man, this, this, the single, I was thinking about somebody else. I was just thinking about a scenario which I'm writing. And it wasn't until I'd shot the video for the song that I'm saying, right, you know, in the first verse I've got my girls, and in the second verse I've got my missus, and then hold on. My God, this, this is about me. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how that's how things normally come come about. You know, I just start off with a vibe, go with a melody, and then the melody, you know, tells me a certain lyric, and then the lyric goes to from here to there. Um, and like I said, it's just somebody guiding me to tell me to do this, to do that, to do this, to do that, and you know, give thanks. It's interesting you said it was seven years from since your last album, because that's like a cycle as well. So this album probably happened at the at the correct time energetically. Yeah, yeah. I, I always tend to find as well that when I'm writing or when I'm ready to write music that I'm, I'm listening to um, compilation CDs or cassettes that I used to have in the day. I used to make like uh, compilation cassettes <laughs> and like all these different kind of styles together and then inspired me to go and write something as well. So I think I've, I, I've, I found that I'd got to a point like last year that I'd right, I've got enough of this music here. Because some, some of these songs are like, 10, 12 years old. Wow. They're not just brand new ones, you know. The man is like probably the newest one. Yeah. Some of them are like really old, older than that. But, you know, 
they're fresh, you know. I always make music that you can play anytime, any place, anywhere. Because you know, you don't, don't you don't want to make music that's in now because if it's in now, <laughs> it's gonna be past later. Totally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um yeah. And you did this with True Thoughts? Uh, no, True Thoughts was the pre uh they they released uh, the, the track I did with uh, Zed Bias, which oh. was dancing. I released uh, the man on a label called Freestyle Records, oh, right. which is up in North London. Uh, give thanks. And uh, yeah, they just they just had the vision to to say yes to this album, you know. Um, I know a lot of people believed in me still, you know, because I'm one of them artists that keeps chugging along. I'm not I'm not worried about making this big big yeah. you know these big statements or anything like that. I'm I'm there, for, you know, for for the for the for the um, for the duration basically, and they just saw the vi the vision, you know, that 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 music has got some it's got place in history. Yeah. For sure, and you're going to be touring with um, this new album, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I've just come back from France. I was in Lala. Italy pre <laughs> previous to that. Um, we're going to be in Thailand, uh, mm. yeah, Singapore, uh, Bali, New Zealand, Australia, wow. all over, all over the show, really, you know. So good that everyone over the world is feeling that vibe, the Omar vibe, because you have got masses of fans. Because, like you said, you're not an obvious massive star, but when you go to wherever you're going, there's just heaps of people there giving you so much love, still buying your music, still listening to you and still loving your performances. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's the blessing, you know, that um, I've got my little pocket of fans. Wherever I step off the plane in the world, yeah. somebody comes up to me and goes, oh, oh, great to see you. I love your music, you know what I mean? And, and like I said, my ego is just that, <laughs> that good. That it, That's all it takes to me to go, oh, yeah, man, this is cool. Right, so everyone get that album. I've listened to it and it's really good. I can't wait to see you perform it tonight. I've got a few tracks that are my favourite. Okay. I'll give you the list. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's also your birthday soon, isn't it? On Monday, yeah. It was, <laughs> I'm uh, 23. <laughs> 23 in the heart, man. As, uh, so there's no such thing as time. There's no such thing as age. That's what I say. There we go. <laughs> You're a Libra as well, aren't you? I'm a Libra, yeah, yeah. Balancing it up, baby. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Love to love and love to be loved. There we go. <laughs> and on that note, thank you so much, Omar, for talking to us. My pleasure. And I look forward to perform, um, seeing your performance later on. Yeah, so am I. Cool. Get, uh, get back to sound checking now. So thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome. Take care. Thanks a lot, guys. So if you like the video, subscribe, like, share this video with everyone, and support good music and buy this album, The Man Omar. All the links will be down at the bottom of the video. Take care. Bye.